Thank you again for joining me, my friend, the Holy Spirit. Gift is the word of love. I am so excited today. We're going to continue seeing the Holy Spirit in the fullness of who he is, in the seven spirits of God. As we start, let us start with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your illumination of who you are, of who the Holy Spirit is, of who Jesus is. Thank you because you have made us. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord, created us, gave us the breath of life. You give us life that we may live for your purpose. You give us life that we may live for you. You give us and brought us here and we are still alive and listening to this message because of what you put in us during creation that can only be released and fulfilled by my friend, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of God, may you be released into this place. Illuminate Christ. Illuminate and glorify Jesus that he may glorify the Father through the Son. Son, Lord, we bless you, we worship you, we adore you, we receive your wisdom, we receive your knowledge, counsel, power, might, understanding, fear of God today. That Lord, just like Christ, we may delight in the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Today, as you plant these seeds in us, as you feed us, may it not fall on unfertile ground. Let it fall and bear fruits, deep roots that will germinate and produce fruits that will feed our spirit, souls, and bodies, that will feed others to the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray, believe, and receive with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. All right, so we continue with um, my friend, the Holy Spirit, Deep Dive series, 65. Page 65, we saw the seven spirits of God, the spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel, might, knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And we said, Christ delighted in the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So without the fullness of the Holy Spirit, who carries the fullness of God the Father, which God the Son had during the, his stay on earth as man, a believer in Christ will not succeed in their God-given task. When Christ came to earth for his assignment, he was empowered by all these spirits from God, through God the Holy Spirit. One thing that truly stands out is that Christ delighted in the spirit of the fear of the Lord. My life turned around and God started using me profoundly when I prayed for and received this spirit, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I did not know that fear of God was a spirit. I just thought it was a concept, but it is a spirit. Just like fear is a spirit. There are two kinds of spirits of fear. There is one from God called the fear of God, which helps us to live righteously. And there is another spirit of fear, which comes from the devil called the spirit of fear. The reason why it does not specify what kind of fear it is, it is because it is responsible for all other kinds of fears other than the fear of God. This spirit of fear makes people live in sin. God has not given us this spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of a sound mind, as 2 Timothy 1, 7 states. Power, love, and a sound mind are spirits. They are from God that counterattack the spirit of fear from the devil. When we succumb to the spirit of fear, we get robbed of our power, our love, and of our sound mind. People who live in fear cannot be productive. They are afraid to start things on or try something new. They fear what others may think or say or what they may lose and so on. These people displease God because they have no faith. It's almost like, you remember, we're going to talk about this, the, the servants, one of them who was afraid to invest in the talent that he was given. Fear is lack of trust in God. It is a spirit that insults God. It calls him names like, you're so unfaithful, so I'm afraid of you. You're powerless, oh, so I'm afraid, well, I'm going to lose here. You're a liar, so I'm, I, I'm afraid, I don't want to trust you. You're an abuser, I cannot release myself to you, I cannot trust you. Fear is an insult to God's ability and intelligence. It is an insult to his love. Fear will make a believer get less than what God has in store for them. And they have less kingdom authority. Because a fearful person can sell out the kingdom. God is not going to entrust his kingdom to people who are full of fear. Like the children of Israel in the wilderness. They were afraid of, of the giants. And God wasn't going to entrust them 
with the territory of giants if you are afraid of giants. If you do not see God as a God who created this giant so he's greater than them, then guess what? You're not worthy getting into the promised land. So, the devil gives people the spirit of fear to paralyze them so that they cannot fulfill their purpose on earth. He does it to protect himself from them because he knows if they truly know, knew who they were in Christ and the power that they possess in Christ, his kingdom would be defeated. So fear is his greatest weapon against any believer of Christ. Many mental health issues with which people suffer from come as a result of this spirit of fear. Fear brings anxiety. It's like a gang, you know, like they, they, like, they like to travel in gangs. So fear brings anxiety, hopelessness, helplessness, depression, anger, rage, paranoia, insecurities, jealousy, malice, suicide, and murder. Fear is a wicked spirit. An example of this is a story about the fearful servant that exposes fear as a wicked spirit which robs us of our dominion and power. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, Matthew 25, from 25 to 28. Matthew 25, 25 to 28. The Bible says, I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here's your money back. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and I gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, Take the money from this servant and give it to the one with ten bags of silver. The authority in the kingdom is what gives you power over principalities and powers of darkness. Without this authority, the enemy has the upper hand. So, this servant who decided that, no, I am so afraid to invest, while well, the other two servants, if you read the whole story, there were three servants. So, the two invested. One had ten, so he multiplied it. The other one had two, he multiplied it. But this other one had only one and he hid it. The one that did, did not multiply, the assignment was given, the talent was given to the one who had more. So that, because, see, the kingdom of God has to keep going. If you are lazy and you are fearful, you are wicked. You are stalling the kingdom. So what happens is you are served. Just like in a game. In the game when somebody is not performing what they are supposed to do, the role that you are supposed to do, like in basketball. Let's say you are the one supposed to, you know, to take the ball, you are, you are a point guard and you don't do what you are supposed to do. Guess what? You are going to be subbed. The coach is going to take you out and put somebody else who is going to take this. And see, if it is happening on earth, it will definitely happen in the spiritual realm. Some people's assignments are going to be subbed for somebody else who is going to be able to do it without fear. So your authority will be stripped of you. Have you accepted this spirit of fear to your destruction? Or do you live a life of victory, righteousness and holiness with the fear of God? Because of fear of man, we tell lies so that we don't get in trouble with our fellow man. Instead of telling the truth and being right with God. We fear what people will say if they saw our sinful habits. So we hide this evil act. And we play righteous in their presence while we remain filthy in our own eyes and in God's eyes. And guess who else is watching you? The devil. The enemy will always have power over us in the spiritual realm as long as we live in the fear of others because we sin and fall short of the glory of God and power. Fear of people leads to sin. Always. Fear of God leads to righteousness always. May God give us a spirit of fear of God that we may delight in him so that we may like Christ live righteous, pure and holy lives in God's eyes that we may receive dominion over the kingdom of darkness. I'm going to read a few scriptures about fear of the Lord. Proverbs 9 10. 
It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Psalms 111 verse 10, The fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey his commands will grow in wisdom. You see, the fear of the Lord, it's an automatic wisdom catcher. And this is what he says to all humanity in Job 28, 28. The fear of the Lord is true wisdom. To forsake evil is real understanding. See, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom is in the spirit of the fear of God. When we live and delight in the fear of God, we get wisdom, which leads to knowledge and understanding, giving us might and counsel for daily work that we are created to do. So the only thing is, if you just have that one spirit of the fear of the Lord, all it attracts all these other spirits. When delight, we delight in the spirit of the fear of the Lord like Jesus did, we will attract all these other spirits of God into our lives and we will be fully equipped to fulfill our God-given task. Like Jesus was successful. Why? Because he had the seven spirits of God in him. He delighted in the spirit of the fear of God. Revelations 3, 1. And to the angel of the assembly in Sardis write, He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says these things. I know your works, that you have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Again, in Revelations 4, 5. From the throne came flashes of lightning and the rumble of thunder. And in front of the throne were seven torches with burning flames. This is the sevenfold spirit of God. John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to your remembrance all things that I said to you. All. He will teach you everything. He will remind you everything. Numbers 8, 1 to 4. Are you seeing as we read these scriptures where the Holy Spirit is? The Holy Spirit is a must. He is in the presence of God. You cannot ignore him and get into the presence of God. You cannot ignore the Holy Spirit of God and get revelations from God. You cannot go ignore the Holy Spirit of God and know all things and be reminded of all things. You cannot ignore the Holy Spirit of God. Now the Bible says in Numbers 8, 1 to 4, And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and say to him, When you arrange the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light in front of the lampstand. Who? The seven lamps shall give light in front of the lampstand. And Aaron did so. He arranged the lamps to face towards the front of the lampstand as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, this workmanship of the lampstand was hammered gold. From its shaft to its flowers, it, is a, it was hammered work according to the pattern which the Lord had shown Moses, so he made the lampstand. These seven lamps are to give light in front of the lampstand. The lampstand supports or holds the lamps and they all supply where the lamp feeds from to shine their light. Without the lampstand, the lamps cannot stand. Nor can they have the oil to produce light and keep on burning. So what is the lampstand? The lampstand is the Holy Spirit. The seven lamps are the seven churches who can only shine the light of Christ and know Christ by feeding on the revelation from the Holy Spirit of God. They cannot stand alone. Otherwise, they will fall. Beloved, we cannot support ourselves. We will fall. We must rely on the Holy Spirit to help us to stand. The holy place was dark and without windows, so the natural sunlight could not shine in. The light in this holy place is found in the seven lamps, also representing the seven spirits of God who illuminate Christ. The word of God to the seven churches of Christ. So these seven lamps, they represent the seven spirits of God who illuminate Christ, who is the word of God, to the seven churches of Christ. Remember the Psalms of David that states, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. So, you can take this lampstand and these lamps and take the lampstand as the Holy Spirit that the oil is in this lampstand and these other lamps draw from this lampstand that has the oil so the seven spirits of God 
The seven different churches that Jesus is talking about, all drawing from this lampstand. This lampstand is the word of God. This lampstand is the word. That word is a lamp unto my feet. And with the Holy Spirit, it lights up my path. So I wanted to look at the lampstand in different ways. This is God the Son. God the Holy Spirit is the oil in the lampstand. And his seven spirits that illuminate Christ, the different revelations of Christ, and the seven churches that draw from this one, where the Holy Spirit lights you up. And that's why he says, you are the light of the world. The seven churches, the seven Christians, types of the, the, you, we are the light of the world. A city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Only if we allow for the Holy Spirit to illuminate Christ, that we may shine Christ to the world. So we understand now why the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The temple was purposefully made in that way with those specifications because it was important to know that the way to the Father is only through Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, who is made manifest by God the Holy Spirit. Only by God the Holy Spirit can anyone be convicted of sin, righteousness, and judgment. No one can be born again unless the Holy Spirit does a work of conviction in them. No one can stop sinning by their strength. It is only by the Spirit that we put to death the deeds of the flesh that we may live, according to Romans 8. We must be led and we must get support of the oil of the anointing from my friend the Holy Spirit. You can never shine the light of God without my friend the Holy Spirit. Only by the guidance of God the Holy Spirit can we know the will of the Father through His Son, who is the Word of the Father. Many of us struggle to live righteously because we think we can do it on our own. We walk in darkness because we ignore the light that should light our way and the support we need from the Holy Spirit. Like little children who need to hold their parents' hand for support as they learn to walk, we need to hold the Holy Spirit's hand and learn to walk in the kingdom. We have to learn to walk the way we are supposed to walk in the kingdom. You cannot walk the same way you walk on earth in the kingdom. No, there is a way that we are supposed to walk in the kingdom. And how do you learn it if you are not taught how to walk? Hold the Holy Spirit's hand. He can teach you. And he'll teach us how to walk in this kingdom. We cannot be born and start running. Remember, it's a process. And this process, only the Holy Spirit knows and is assigned to take us through it. So we are born again. Once we are born again, then we need to totally rely on the Holy Spirit to nurture us, to feed us, then to teach us how to crawl, how to walk, how to run, how to thrive in the kingdom of God. Let us not be like stubborn children who do not want to hold their parents' hand. They keep stumbling, Falling, running into danger. Some Christians act like these children. And it's no wonder we stumble and often fall. Getting injured by the enemy and the traps he sets our way. Only those led by the Holy Spirit and spend time in the word of God can overcome the enemy because they live in the light. They see things through God's eyes, not through the eyes of the enemy. Does the Holy Spirit light your life or are you still walking in darkness? Are you a stubborn child or a yielded child? One who doesn't like to, to hold, you, you know, it's so funny when you, you want to hold a little kid's hand and you're putting your hand out to hold them, they do this. A lot of Christians do this. You don't want. And then they go like this, aside, thinking that oh, I'm going to walk on my own. Are you that stubborn child? Remember the Holy Spirit is the one who works in us both to will and to do what God desires according to Philippians 2.13. We cannot see the spiritual realm where our battles are through our natural eyes. The eyes of the flesh cannot show us what is in the spirit. Without my friend the Holy Spirit, we are disadvantaged because we are fighting an unseen enemy. But the enemy can see us. Imagine you're fighting a spirit, you are in the flesh, and you, somebody starts slapping you and you don't know where they are, where they're coming from, or where they're going. The enemy can see us. 
In this case, we are defeated before we even begin to fight. Therefore, let us allow the Holy Spirit to lead us so we can win this battle. Without the Holy Spirit, we are fighting a defeated battle. Because we are, fighting against, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against principalities and powers of darkness in the heavenly places. So those principalities and powers of darkness in the heavenly places, how are we supposed to know what they are doing or what they are trying to do? Only by the, my friend, the Holy Spirit. He is the only one who can reveal to us exactly what they have planned and how to defeat them. There is a reason why we have the Old Testament. It was a shadow of what was to come. If we are to understand who God is and how to worship him in the fullness of his glory, in the spirit and in truth, we cannot ignore the Old Testament. The temple and the set rules and the rituals, they tell us so much about God and which route we must follow to get to him. These different stages are, and places of worship, the outer court, the inner courts, the holier place, and the highest level, which is the Holy of Holies, symbolize the different dimensions of Christianity or relationship with Christ. Remember, Christianity is not a religion. Rather, it is a personal relationship with God. God the Father, through God the Son, by the help of God the Holy Spirit. We are going to stop there today. As we come back next time, we are going to see the different dimensions of God. Jesus said, I did not come to do away with the law. I came to fulfill it. We are the temple of God. A long time ago in the Old Testament, it used to be a building. Now, in this new life, born again life, it is our bodies. The holy of holies, the holy place, the outer courts, all that was physical now in this New Testament, we are the temple. Do you want to find out how you can be able to get intimate with God? Get into the Holy of Holies where you are one, perfect in one with God. Where everything is perfected because of God the Holy Spirit. Well, join me again as we continue this series. My friend, the Holy Spirit, the deep dive series in Jesus name. Stay safe and I love you.